How's it going everyone? College Lefty and in this video I'm going to be going over some hitting tips, how to warm up, some of my adjusted settings that I've recently changed. Uh, but before I get into that video I quickly wanted to show you guys my lifetime record and stats. I'm hitting 316, slugging about 500. My ERA is a lifetime of 2.53 so that's not bad but this video is going to focus on mainly hitting tips. I am going to go over all of my settings really quickly here in this video. I do like to practice on legend difficulty. I use zone hitting with strike zone hitting view. I have the dynamic uh, in play view for offense and I keep the ball trail on. Those are mainly the, the settings that you want to keep in mind there. For pitching, I also like to practice on legend difficulty. I use pure analog uh, pitching interface. I also use strike zone for my pitching view and I have the pitch ball marker as, uh, as always on with the pitch trail on. As far as uh, fielding stats, there are really two, only two things you need to keep in mind. I guess three things are uh, button accuracy, the throwing meter is on, as well as throw canceling is on. I guess defensive shift is auto or off, that's kind of your personal preference. But then another feature I wanted to include in this video is if you have a PS4 Pro, I believe that this is a PS4 Pro exclusive feature, you go into game resolution, you can change it between faster balance and sharper. I personally think uh, faster is better. I've kind of messed with this a little bit in practicing throughout uh, moments and stuff like that against the computer. But a good way to warm up for a ranked seasons game, especially if you're trying to make a push for World Series or uh, if you're in the CES division, is playing against custom practice against the computer. You can practice on legend difficulty against Nolan Ryan if you do this team where you're the long ball beast going up against the boomers. That's kind of my personal preference. I like to practice with some of these guys. They have some of the legends and flashbacks on the team. But you can also use a variety of teams there, like the American and National League All-Star teams. You can also use other throwback legend teams to try and practice with some live series guys or some legends and flashbacks that you might want to try out. This is a quick example of uh, making a play. You can create a play. You can choose to repeat the play. You can create a batting count and uh, put specific hitters up at the dish. I'm gonna quickly go into that uh, real quick right here. Uh, you can kinda put a runner on base if you want to start with a, a specific situation and practice getting runners in from third base with less than two outs or practice with a specific legend hitter that you might wanna try out for your Diamond Dynasty team before you actually pick them up. I think this is a really good way to practice. This is specifically how I warm up for a game if I do have time. I don't always have the time to warm up but uh, as you can see, this is on Legend Difficulty facing uh, Legend Nolan Ryan. And he's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be like the Signature Series version or anything. But it is going to be a nice, uh, a nice way to kind of get a glimpse of good velocity, get your timing down, and kind of start your approach, uh, get adjusted to some of the pitches, work on your plate discipline, if that makes sense. But you have to keep in mind that the contact uh, timing windows for against the computer are slightly different than when when you're playing against an online player if you're warming up for that you have to also keep that in mind you can go in and adjust the sliders as well and turn up the pitch velocity if you're trying to uh, practice for a big time situation or like a tournament game or something another good way to practice I know a lot of uh, good players in this game practice with challenge of the week it's also a good way to earn rewards if you do finish in the top 100 you can unlock a variety of rewards including actual memorabilia from like players like Ken Griffey Jr. like signed autographed hats and and bats and stuff like that but uh, as you can see here it is a leaderboard ranking system they give you a uh, matchup basically this is Manny Machado facing Zach Granke and it upgrades the difficulty as you move through uh, I guess this challenge basically you get three outs to work with and you also get three strikes including like foul balls and everything like that so it is a good way to kind of go through the variety of difficulties in this game and practice. As you can see here, I'm on Hall of Fame difficulty. I have two strikes. So if I miss a ball, uh, if I swing through one completely, then I'm going to have to uh, reset on rookie and I'll also have two outs as well. So it's a good way to kind of practice against a variety of, of pitchers. It's a nice challenge. You can earn some rewards if you're one of the better players in this game and can get a very high score and rack up the multiplier and all that stuff for taking balls and hitting home runs and stuff like that. So I think this is an awesome way to practice. This is actually the first time I was doing this uh, for this video this year. I complete. I, I guess I tried the challenge of the week a few times last year in MLB The Show 18, but I mainly do the custom practice if I'm going to try and warm up. 
there as you can see I struck out and I it reset to rookie but let's go ahead and get into some gameplay this is gonna be a ranked seasons game that I played on uh, one of my twitch live streams and I'm gonna kind of break down my approach this far in this game I'm in the bottom of the third inning and I don't even have a hit yet I'm facing live series Max Scherzer and basically uh, I got Kershaw up at the plate and I hit a double with the pitcher and that was a slider over the middle of the plate really quickly I just wanted to include this play as I get the catcher's throwing meter and throw the runner out in Mookie Betts trying to steal if you guys want to see a video on how to get the catcher's throwing meter I will have that uh, video commented down below and pinned so you guys can uh, click on that link but uh, what I was saying about Max Scherzer is I'm really trying to focus on taking away uh, his best pitch which is his fastball and as well as his slider he's gonna throw the slider inside to lefties and that's what I'm looking for I'm not trying to uh, be too aggressive early on in the count I'm looking for a pitch over the middle of the plate if he throws it there I'm gonna try and react I'm looking for kind of a fastball inside or a slider inside if he throws other pitches like for example that cutter inside early in the count I'm gonna lay off of it it's not a pitch that I can do damage with I mean ideally and I'm, I'm not gonna be able to lay off of it all the time there but I, I'm looking for pitches that are over the middle of the plate that I can barrel up like that changeup, for example I thought that that was a slider and I would have been on it if it was it would have been a hanging slider but there I'm sitting on the fastball and I swung back-to-back -back pitches on a hitters count but I just wanted to show a few examples of what I'm looking for in specific situations. And every hitter is different. I mean, some power hitters, you're looking to get underneath the ball uh, slightly, especially on, uh, I think this game is played on Hall of Fame difficulty. And I'm going to have a variety of games like events and rank seasons as well. But contact hitters, you're looking to uh, get more on top of the baseball. Here with Jose Ramirez, I got slightly under that one. I sent it out to right field, it was a pitch that I was looking for, a fastball over the middle of the plate, uh, slightly inside, it was a good pitch for him, but it was also a pretty good pitch that I could have barreled up, it was a good okay feedback, I'll try to move my face cam to the left side for that one, but the, once again, I mean, early on in the count right there with Jose Reyes, uh, he throws a hanging pitch, an off speed pitch over the middle of the plate, and that's a pitch that I'm going to try and take a hack at, I'm not going to swing at something that's in the dirt. Uh, ideally I'm not going to swing at something in the dirt uh, early on in the count but the opponent went ahead and left in his uh, his position player there I'm not really sure he kind of gave up by only down a few runs but even though he does that I'm looking to stay patient at the plate and I hit a home run there with uh, the the diamond Ken Griffey Jr. so now let's go ahead and get into an event gameplay this is the speedster event and I'm going to kind of break down some of the at-bats uh, early on the difference in my approach in these event games is it's a shortened game so the stamina and confidence for the pitcher is going to be more important you also have to try and take advantage of facing a common pitcher like for example in this at bat we have Joey Gallo up at the plate uh, facing a common pitcher he's going to throw a fastball over the middle of the plate he's going to throw something over the middle of the plate eventually and you have to be ready to uh, ambush that pitch and hit it out uh, the next at bat he left in his pitcher and there with Trevor Story, I'm looking for a pitch up in the zone, something over the middle of the plate. I did miss that one, but it was definitely a hittable pitch and something that I'm looking for early on in the count. That was the only reason why I swung at that. I did have good, okay feedback on it, 90 mile an hour exit velocity. Same thing once again there. I kind of had a late reaction. I wasn't really looking for a fastball. When I'm facing a righty on righty, I'm kind of trying to take away the front door slider and the front door cutter if the pitcher does throw it. But this guy was kind of throwing the the high slider, the, the high off-speed pitches, up, uh, up and away fastballs, stuff like that. So I was looking for that pitch as the game moved on. That's one thing in these shortened three inning games, it's tougher to kind of figure out your uh, opponent's tendencies. In ranked seasons game, you can kind of figure out where the opponent is attacking you more often for, because you're gonna have more at bats in, in that game. For example, in the first game, I realized that the opponent was throwing a lot of sliders and curveballs low and inside. So I was started to sit on that pitch in these shortened games. I kind of have to just look for pitches over the middle of the plate more and try to adjust to the tendencies that my opponent is uh, is throwing there. As Trevor Story sends one into the gap, I mean, I'm looking to uh, continue on this rally. It's a bottom of the fourth inning. I need to do something because there are uh, two outs in this situation. I have Willie Mays who hits lefties a lot better, but he does hang a change up there facing Pat Neshek. And it was middle inside. That's something that I'm looking for on an 0-1 count. 
and sometimes you just have to react to the off-speed pitches but I was able to uh, use a regular X swing there and hit one with some with a good amount of power and I walked that one off but let's go ahead and get into another event gameplay I wanted to talk a little bit about timing and PCI I like to move my PCI before the, uh, the actual pitch is coming in but there as you can see I did have a late swing with Jackie Robinson there he is a contact hitter so that does help me contact hitter with high vision but I did swing later in the zone, which allows me to swing more down. So that what I mean by that is swing lower in the zone with my bat. So my the angle of my bat going through the zone is going to allow me to hit pitches like that below the zone. As you can see with the PCI, my PCI was uh, slightly underneath the ball, even though I, it was a pitch below the zone, if that makes sense. Same type of thing here with Trevor Story. I did swing late there, and it was a 3-0 count. The only reason I did swing at that pitch was because it was over the middle of the plate. It was a pitch that I was looking for, and I'm trying to make a productive out at least in a sack fly. But this opponent is up by two runs in the bottom of the second inning, and I really have to make every at-bat count in this situation. I have a 2 and one count with Gary Sanchez. This particular pitcher throws a cutter, so I'm looking to take away that front door cutter as he throws it there. I was slightly early on that one, but that's really what you how you want to hit that front door cutter is slightly early. As uh, I pulled it down the left field line, that one was almost kept fair, but just slightly foul. And uh, I'm also going to be able to adjust to the slider off of that cutter. But there the opponent threw a four-seam fastball, and I kind of just reacted to it, swung and barreled it up on the inside half of the plate and hit a home run there with Gary Sanchez. That's going to bring up Joey Gallo. And I'm really looking for a pitch over the middle, a fastball preferably. Uh, lower to even even on the outer part of the plate. I'm trying to pull one But he does go ahead and walk him later on in the uh, in the game with Kyle Schwarber it, it sets up working the pitcher like that It sets up the confidence to go into the yellow and the pitcher to uh, hang a pitch there for Kyle Schwarber to hit one out um, In another game in the top of the third inning down to my last out Schwarber lefty on lefty hits another one out That was an inside slider and I was kind of looking for a fastball, but that allowed me to adjust. And later on in this game, we have a common hitter up in Lewis Brinson. And he is going to barrel one up. That was over the middle of the plate. That's something I'm looking for early in the count. A fastball, middle in, middle away. Something that, that I can drive. And I was able to uh, win that game because of that hit. But uh, once again, in the bottom of the third inning, I'm trying to be patient. He's going to throw a hanging curveball. It depends on the pitcher that you're facing. I know the opponent using that uh, Silver Air Gagne is going to go to that curveball if he can. And uh, later in the game, he tries a fastball. And that was middle away. I barreled it up. It's, you're not always going to get rewarded for your good squared up swings. But there, I barreled it up. Line drive, exit velocity of 111. And I'm really looking for a fastball. There I wasn't quite ready for a fastball middle inside. I'm kind of uh, sitting on a curveball as well. It's tough to adjust. I'm trying to take away the two best pitches that Eric Gagne throws and try to adjust to the other pitches if that makes sense. He does go with the fastball up and away and I hit it out for a no doubter. In this game, uh, the opponent brought in the Silver Chapman who has horrible control. But he does have very effective pitches if you're able to locate with him. So I'm looking for something inside, a fastball middle in. And uh, just as I mentioned with the late swings, swinging below the zone, if you swing early and get the PCI up there, you can hit pitches that are above the zone for uh, for high exit velocity line drives if you do get the barrel of the bat to it. And that's exactly what happened with Schwarber there. Then on, on the flip side, a pitch that was lower in the zone, I swung a little bit later, still pulled the ball with Gallo there for a no doubter. I ended up losing that game. The opponent came back and won, but I wanted to include those offensive highlights. Uh, with this one, this pitch was a low and away off-speed pitch. I think it was a changeup, and I swung late on it, but I did swing below the zone. Good, good. I was way underneath the ball, but it also depends on the tier of the pitcher. This is a uh, common pitcher, if I'm not mistaken. And it also depends on the pitcher's feedback. Whether they got early feedback, you're more likely to give up a home run. The opponent doesn't necessarily have to be on top of the baseball or square it up completely to hit it out. If you get just late feedback, uh, same type of thing. But there, Kyle Schwarber, I mean, lefty, lefty, he's been going off in this one. He's hit a couple no-doubt home runs, and then there with that line drive home run. But also the opponent left in his pitcher for, for too long. That allows me to uh, power swing with Gary Sanchez. I'm not going to power swing often, but I am going to use it more so on all-star difficulty. I'm going to use it when the pitcher's confidence and stamina is lowered. 
uh, later in the game if I need a big hit, if I have two outs and a hitter's count, something like that. If I get something going where I hit a couple home runs in a row, then I am looking to power swing. But let's go ahead and uh, finish off with this No Doubter from Gallo. Uh, Gallo is a main card that I like to use in this event. I was leading him off, so that's why he had so many clips in this one. He had the advantage. But thank you guys so much for watching. That's going to do it for my hitting tips, settings, and just a few extra other tips. If you're looking for some other videos, I'll have those linked. But thank you guys so much. I'm College Lefty, and have a great day.